Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDevFuel and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over how to add a loading indicator to our web application using HTMX. So, when a user submits a form or takes an action inside our web application, we want to change the state of that web application to let the user know that something is happening in the backend and that the request is processing. The example we're going to use is pretty simple. We want to add loading indicators when we create a new user by submitting the form and also when we delete a user from the list. On the back end, we've set up the following routes using the goes standard library. We can get a list of users using the get method. We can create a new user using the post method. And finally, we can delete a user using the delete method and also passing inside the URL, the ID of the user that we want to delete. The implementation here for listing, adding and deleting a user doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below so you can check this repo and you can take a look at all of the implementation details. But essentially, we are writing to a file each time that we make any kind of modifications to our list of users. Then we have a temple file with three different templates. First, the user's template. And then inside of this template, we want to range through each one of the users and then render a user row template. At the bottom, we also want to render the user form. And inside of the user row template, we not only display the email address, but like we saw previously, we also want to render a button to allow us to delete a user. And at the bottom, we have the user form template, which is going to make a request to forward slash users using the post method. The target is going to be the ID of users and the swapping strategy is going to be before end so that we can insert a new user at the bottom of the list each time that it is created. And this little example works in the following way. We can add here a new email address we submit it and then it gets appended to the list. And if we want to remove it, we can click here to delete it. Now, the thing is that this might look okay inside of the local host environment because all of these operations are pretty quick. But if a user is using this web application in a real world scenario, this still wouldn't be good when it comes to the user experience and more specifically what we want to accomplish here, which is a loading indicator. So let's throw the request and let's give this another try. We are going to change this to 3G. And if we now click here on add, as you'll be able to see, there will be a time where nothing happens inside of the page while this request is being processed. So if you click here, we wait for a little bit and only after waiting do we see here the newly inserted user. And the same thing goes for deleting a user. If we click here, we still need to wait a little bit before the action actually completes and the user gets removed from the DOM. And instead of having this poor user experience, we want to improve it by adding a loading indicator. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. To accomplish this, we'll be using two different HTMX attributes. First, this HX disabled ELT, which stands for element. And this attribute, like the documentation says, allows you to specify elements that will have the disabled attribute added to them for the duration of the request. And then we'll also use this HX indicator attribute to show a loading spinner for the duration of the request. But before we continue, if you want to learn more about how to build web applications with HTMX, Go and PostgreSQL, then go to webdevfuel.com forward slash HGSB or click the link in the description down below. First, let's disable this form from being submitted while the request is occurring. So we want to add here HX disabled and then ELT and the value is going to be the following. We want to type here find and then button. And if we take a look here at the documentation, like it says, find is going to find the first child descendant element that matches the given CSX selector. So this is going to find the first button that we have inside of this form, and it is going to disable it. And also to add a visual cue, let's say here using Tailwind CSS first disable, and then we want to add the opacity 
to, for example, 25%. Now, if we submit this form and we try to click again while the form is being submitted, we won't be able to. And like you saw, we also had that visual cue since the opacity of the button changed during the request. Now, let's do the same thing for the delete button. So we want to type here HX disabled and then ELT. And in this case, since we don't want to look for an other element, but rather we want to mark this element itself as being disabled, we simply need to type here this to let HTMX know that we want to disable this button while the request is occurring. And then let's also add a visual cue to this button. So we want to say here that when disabled, the opacity is also going to be 25%. And now inside of the browser again, with the request being throttled, if we click here on delete, as you can see, the opacity changes while the user is being deleted on the backend. Inside the template file, let's create a new template that we'll call spinner. And this one is going to contain the following contents. So we want to add a very simple SVG. The ID needs to be spinner. And then we also want to add the following classes to ensure that this works correctly with HTMX. First of all, we want to add here HTMX-indicator then we want to ensure that by default, this is going to be hidden. And then once this HTMX-request class gets added, we want to change this to the class of block so that this gets displayed inside of the DOM. Now let's add the spinner to the delete button. So we want to include this here at the bottom. And then we still need to do one extra thing. And that is, we want to add here a new HTMX attribute, that is the indicator attribute. So we want to say hx-indicator, and then we want to specify here what the indicator is going to be. And we also want to use here again this find strategy, and then we want to look here for the ID of spinner. And now if we delete a user, we are also going to get this nice animated spinner while the user is being deleted. And finally, let's do the exact same thing for the add button. First, let's require here the spinner. And then let's add the indicator attribute to the form element. And the value is going to be the exact same one we want to find the first spinner by the ID inside of this element. And now when we add a new user to the list, we'll also see the loading indicator inside of the button. So let's give this a try. And as you can see, we now also get this very nice loading indicator, letting us know that something is happening inside of the backend. And this way, when your users are interacting with your web application, they know that the submission was done correctly and something is happening inside of your backend. They still don't know if the submission was successful or not. And what I mean by this is that you still want to show, for example, a toast notification after the request is completed. But by doing this, the user knows that something is happening and that they don't, for example, need to clip multiple times on the button to delete a user or to add a new user to the list. With this being said, I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you on the next one.